from gods the myth echo echo repetition of a sound by reflection of sound waves from a surface he raised the horn to his lips the notes sprang loud and clear and even before the signal faded the wind caught them and seemed to fling the call through all the valley where it returned an echo after echo like all wood nymphs and Echo was lovely and playful, but she was far too talkative, and she always had to have the last word. One day, as she sat combing her hair by a grove of trees, Hera, the queen of the gods, arrived in search of Zeus, her husband. Zeus, the mightiest god of all, had disappeared from their home on Mount Olympus, and Hera was certain that he was in the woods flirting with nymphs. That was, in fact, exactly what Zeus was doing. And Echo, who knew how severely Hera punished anyone who caught Zeus's fancy, at once decided to help her friends the only way she could. Bowing deeply to the queen, Echo began to talk and talk. She talked so much and for so long that when Hera finally took her leave, Zeus and the nymphs had fled from the forest. Furious, Hera turned on Echo. You kept me here with your mindless chatter so Zeus could escape. Now you're going to pay for it. From this moment on, you will never speak again, except to repeat the last words spoken to you. Spoken to you. Echo wandered about miserably for weeks until one day, she spotted a shepherd boy named Narcissus. He was as handsome as a god, tall, broad shoulder, and with the hair the color of sunshine. Echo could not take her eyes off him. She began to follow him everywhere, hoping to catch his attention, but Narcissus never even nodded a greeting. One day, he strolled into the woods while Echo trailed silently behind. In the afternoon, he came upon a pool of water and bent down for a drink. As he leaned over the smooth, dark surface, he caught sight of the most handsome face he had ever seen. Captivated, Narcissus felt knelt down. He smiled, and the youth in the pool smiled back. I think I love you, said Narcissus. Love you, repeated Echo happily. Too absorbed by the face in the pool to notice her, Narcissus waved his hand in greeting, and the youth in the pool waved in return. Narcissus fell so deeply in love with his own image that he just sat by the pool, gazing at his own beautiful face, forgetting to eat and drink, until finally, he pined away and died. As the gods carried him to the realm of the dead, a new flower sprang in the place where he had knelt. It is called Narcissus, better known today as the daffodil, and it is as bright yellow as the hair of the youth who fell in love with himself. When Narcissus was taken to the underworld, Echo also wasted away until only her voice was left, which to this day you can hear repeating the words of others. People who spend hours admiring themselves in the mirror, who talk about themselves all the time, and who are interested only in themselves are called narcissists after the young man in this story. Some individuals are so excessively self-absorbed that it becomes an illness called narcissism.